Today we're going to talk about three forms of simple rational functions. Here are the three forms written on the top. They, the first one's obviously the easiest, like medium, and then most difficult. Um, the easiest one we actually talked about in the last lesson where we talked about inverse variation, y equals a over x. That's pretty much the same thing as y equals k over x. It's just a really simple rational function. The second one is when it's transformed with a, h, and k. And the last one is a third type. So let's take a look at the most simple form and the most simple situation, f of x or y equals 1 over x. Because really, all of these three types, they start here with the most simple form. And if you know that, it's really easy for you to expand your thinking to the harder forms. So we'll start with y equals 1 over x. So this is from y equals a over x, just like we talked about with inverse variation, y equals k over x. So in this most simple form, the graph looks like this. There are two separate lines or functions. They're split apart and because there are two asymptotes that keep them separate. There's, an, there's a vertical asymptote at what, x equals 0. So at this line, x equals 0, there is an asymptote that separates them. And there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, so the line y equals 0 right here that separates them again. Now, these asymptotes will shift around. x equals 0 is the most basic one, but of course, sometimes the asymptote will be x equals negative 2 or x equals 5, whatever. The horizontal asymptote will shift up and down as well. And if we can understand these changes, where they're moving to the left or right or up or down, it's going to make these other forms seem really easy as well. What's most important for you at this point is to know that in the most basic form, y equals 1 over x, the most basic simple rational function, there's a, there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And I made a huge mess of this, so let me draw that again. So in the most basic form, there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 right here. And there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 right here. That splits those two apart. Let's take a look at the middle type where we have a, h, and k, and a is not 1. a in this case is negative 4. So like we said, when it becomes more complicated, we're going to shift those asymptotes. That's the first thing we need to do. We need to draw the asymptotes, the x1 and the y1. The x1 will come from h, so the new x asymptote is negative 2 because h is always opposite. Remember, this entire year we've said whatever h is, we say that's opposite. So in this case, the new x vertical asymptote is at negative 2. So we know nothing will cross this line. None shall pass this line. The new y asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, will be at negative 1. This one's not opposite. k has never been opposite. So at new one at negative 1. And once again, none shall pass this line. So we know this graph. We don't know what it looks like yet, but we know it's contained somewhere in these corners because it can't really cross to the other corners. Now, this one's negative 4, and that's the a. Because of that negative sign for the a, we know it's going to be flipped. So we're used to seeing something down here and up here. That's the most basic form. But because it's flipped, we know it's actually going to be on the other side. So it's going to be something like this, something like this. It's contained here up in the top left, and something down in the bottom right. Of course, if we want to verify that, let's go ahead and graph it really fast, just to check what it looks like. So we have equals negative 4 divided by, and I have to do this in parentheses, I know a lot of your calculators are fancier than mine. Graph it. Zoom out just a bit, or zoom standard. And it looks just like we would expect. There's something up here in the top left, and something down here in the bottom right. And the asymptotes are x equals negative 2, and y equals negative 1. Now, this is very important, because this also tells us what the domain and range are. So the domain for this function remember, domain are those x values, are all the x values except x equals negative 2. It can be anything to the left of it, anything to the left. 
x values can be anything to the left, anything to the right, but it cannot be x equals negative 2 because there's an asymptote there. There's a line there that says, you shall not pass. The y values, the range, remember, the range is the y values. That's all, everything except y equals negative 1. So the range can be anything. It can be anything down here. It can be anything up here. It doesn't matter. But it will never be this line in the middle. So now we're going to take a look at the last form, y equals ax plus b over cx plus d. So we looked at the easy, medium, now we're looking at the hardest one. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 to 10, this one ranks as intense. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that up there. So in this last case, y equals ax plus b over cx plus d, 2 is the a, this 1 is the b, um, C, there's an invisible 1 there. We don't need to write that in, but you should know. And the D is a negative 3. <clears throat> now, in order to find the asymptotes, that's what you always want to start with. Because you can plug this stuff into your calculator, and you can get what the graph is going to look like. But the asymptotes are going to be a little trickier, and you should be able to determine that just by looking at the equation. Um, it's actually faster and easier as well. So in order to find the asymptotes, you'll start with the vertical asymptote. What you'll do is you'll solve this equation on the bottom, x minus 3 equals 0, to find the vertical asymptote. So I'm going to write that for you. Um, and the reason this is a vertical asymptote is if you solve this, and after we solve it, you'll see that x equals 3. So on a graph, there's a line at x equals 3. That's because this is not part of the domain. If you plug in 3 to this equation, you will get some number where you'll be dividing by 0 on the bottom, which you know is never allowed. You've known that for a long time. That's why we have to draw this vertical asymptote, because we're saying to this equation, no, we refuse to put a 3 here, because if we do, we're violating this principle of math. So we're drawing this vertical asymptote to really lock that out from the equation. So that's how we find the vertical asymptote of x equals 3. Um, to find the horizontal one, you've got to use this equation, y equals a divided by c. So that's something you probably want to write down and, and memorize, because that's something new. To find the new horizontal asymptote, it's y equals a divided by c, which is 2, divided by c is 1, so 2. So we know there's a horizontal asymptote here at y equals 2. So our new asymptotes are x equals 3, sorry I'm all over the place, and y equals 2. Those are the new asymptotes. Those lines which this graph is not allowed to cross. So if we want to find the domain and range, of course domain is all the x values except for 3, and the range is all the y values except for